Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our partnering rollout event. We're so excited to have you with us. My name is Sydney Jakes. I'm going to be your MC today coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah. So just a tiny bit about logistics this morning. We are in a webinar format. So that means that the people that you're seeing on the screen, these are members of our steering team that are going to be participating with us today. And the rest of you, uh, we can't see your faces, unfortunately, but we do have the chat box, which is active. Now, the way this is set up is that we have a presentation to share with you today. We don't have a live Q&A session, but if you have questions along the way, please feel free to put your questions into the chat box. That will be found in the bottom um, of your screen. There's a little uh, icon for the chat box. I uh, also wanted to let you know that uh, at the end, we're going to have a drawing for a couple of prizes. So don't give up. Stay with us till the end. We've got some exciting things planned. So we're going to start out with just a quick um, video on partnering by Rick Bosch, who's assistant district engineer. And then after that, we're going to have the privilege of hearing from the director of NDOT, Christina Swallow. Partnering is a collaboration of teamwork and communication between NDOT and the contractors. We all have one common goal, to stay safe, build a quality project, winning awards, on time and within budget. All right, thank you, Rick, for our introduction to partnering this morning. Now we have the privilege of hearing from Christina Swallow, the director of NDOT. We're so glad that she would join us so early in the morning. So. Christina, thanks so much for being here. Good morning, Sydney, and good morning to everybody. I'm uh, so excited to be here with you this morning and to really uh, share with you what we've been working on as uh, we've been trying to make partnering at NDOT even better than it already is. I am also excited to invite you to participate with us as we move forward towards building a more, um, more collaboration in our project teams. As part of the partner revitalization, our steering committee actually discussed possibly even changing the name from partnering to something new and exciting. But after hearing from so many of you through our online survey last year, the committee decided to enhance the name and really define what it means to us here at NDOT and the contracting community. I'm excited to share with you today the new logo that has been created to represent our revitalized efforts. We don't want to focus only on the word partnering, but partnering with purpose. And our purpose is to create deeper levels of trust, collaboration, and better solutions. You can see that on the logo. This represents conscious intent by all parties. Another interesting suggestion that was mentioned multiple times in our partnering surveys taken by NDOT employees was the idea of implementing internal partnering to create even stronger teams across the entire organization, which will result again in deeper levels of trust, collaboration, and even better solutions. So whether you are an NDOT employee, a contractor, consultant, or public, in, public involvement professional, I encourage you to join us in our commitment to make working on NDOT projects a better experience through revitalized partnering. I personally am committed to the partnering process, to improving relationships between NDOT and industry, and I'm committed and excited about the launch of our internal partnering process that will begin the first phase of early this year, or end of this year, I should say. So thank you for being here today. I encourage you to stay engaged throughout this program this morning and ask yourself, what can I do to be a better partner? Thank you so much, Christina. We appreciate your message and we really appreciate your support in this partnering program. So just by way of introduction, like I said, my name is Sydney Jakes and I have been uh, involved in partnering for over 25 years and I love partnering. I love the results I've seen from it. And we've had the chance to work with the team at NDOT for about the last 12 months we've been working on putting together this revitalized partnering effort. 
We're excited about the things that we've been able to accomplish. And I just want to share as we go into this program this morning, I believe that successful partnering, there's, there's three things we need to do. First, it starts with the mindset. So we have to enter in with a mindset that we want to be partners, that we know that this will work. And there's so much research that teaches us that we know that partnering works. Uh, we've had the opportunity to implement partnering all over the world. We have projects in Japan and Korea and Guam, in addition to many different states in the United States. And I know that these principles work. So I'm gonna ask you to start with the mindset that partnering works and partnering will help your projects be more successful. Then the second thing that we need is we need a tool set, a tool set to help us to implement partnering. And that's a lot of what we're gonna talk about today is that we have the tools that will help partnering be even more successful than it already is. And then the third thing is the skill set. So as individuals, we need to develop skills that will help us be better partners. No matter how good we are today, we can continually improve and become better through improving our skill set. So mindset, tool set, skill set, those are some of the things that we're gonna talk about in the next um, few minutes as we roll through our program. So we want to keep you engaged with us this morning. I'm going to turn the time over to Cheryl Wild. She's in studio with me, socially distanced, and she just has a little trivia question for us to start out with today. Okay, well, welcome to our meeting this afternoon. We're so glad you're here. I also work with Sydney and have been working with NDOT on this revitalized partnering. So one of the things we wanted to do is make sure that you understand that partnering is a value. It's not just one of those soft skills that we like to talk about that makes things better, but it really can be a value to your project. So we'd like you to take advantage of the chat window to answer this question. We want to know what you think the savings is or what the return on investment is. So if you spend one dollar on partnering, and that could be invested in partnering meetings and um, maybe renting the space for a partnering meeting, for every dollar invested, want to know what you think is the return for that. So just to give you a little bit of a head start, I'm going to say choose among these numbers. Let's say maybe is it $82? Is it $35 or do you think it's $114? Those are, those are your choices. So 82, 35, or 114. There's a lot of you signed on today. So if you could just type into the chat and see what you think. Um, well, we're definitely getting uh, some, some votes coming in. Um, um, take a look here. There's a, a few of you that are saying 82. Several of you have said 114. Before I give you the exact answer, I want to let you know the source of this information is that it comes from the International Partnering Institute. So every year, the International Partnering Institute surveys projects internationally, but primarily in the United States, to see their investment versus what they've saved in the course of the project. A lot of you are correct. The correct answer is $114. So as we go through these discussions today, we want you to recognize that this is a worthwhile investment for your project. If you're talking about a multi-million dollar project, that's a pretty large return on investment. So with that, we want to lead you into the program. We're going to give you some introductions to who and what and how we're doing it. Sydney? All right. So one of the things that we've been working on is kind of updating and revitalizing uh, the resources that we had. So one of the things that we've been able to update is the partnering website at NDOT. So if you were to go to the partnering website, a few different things that you would see are we have the new partnering specification, we have the new partnering field guide, and we also have a list of the steering team members that serve on the partnering committee. So I just wanna briefly tell you who they are and who's representing uh, you in this effort of partnering and then quite a few of these people you're going to see on video during our presentation today So as co-chairs of the partnering committee, we have Brian Dowd from Granite Construction and also Sharon Forstler from NDOT as Members of the committee. We have Seth Alexander from Ames Construction Ron Adair from Aggregate Industries Rick Bosch who's also with NDOT and Mario Gomez with NDOT Couple more contractors, we have Claire Kohatsu from Aztec Inspections and Shane Glenn from Par Electric. We have Cliff Lawson from NDOT and Craig Madol, 
who is the CEO of the Nevada chapter of the AGC. And then we also have Tanya Andre, who is the construction administrative manager for NDOT. So that's our current partnering committee. And we're going to introduce you to many of them today through our videos. So we're gonna turn the time over to Sharon Forschler. Hi, I'm Sharon Forschler, Chief Construction Engineer for NDOT. I have been with NDOT for 22 years and I am co-chair of the steering committee for partnering. Why did we undertake revitalizing partnering, you might ask? Partnering was implemented by NDOT and the contractors in 2010. However, the program has become somewhat stagnant over the last 10 years. Partnering is NDOT's way of doing business, and overall, we do an excellent job working with our contractors. However, the program hasn't been updated since 2010. We stopped providing training, but it was still expected that the project teams would partner their projects. We felt it wasn't fair to the project teams to have stagnant guidelines and materials for partnering, and felt we weren't supporting the partnering efforts as best we could. The construction office reached out to the contractor through the AGC to re-energize the program, and a team was put together to lead the effort. The team was comprised of NDOT and contractor staff. We determined a process would be used to re-energize the program, and it included generating a partnering vision, what is needed to make partnering a success. We also needed to provide clarity to staff and contractors on what partnering is and generate a platform for consistency within the partnering program. We felt an imperative to get a commitment from all project team members to actively participate in partnering. And to get buy-in from everyone, we needed to provide the appropriate tools and resources. To understand what needed to be changed in the existing program and set NDOT and the contractors up for success, we kicked off with Sydney attending the resident engineer meeting in 2019 to gain insight into the NDOT field staff's perspective on the program. Surveys and interviews were completed with NDOT and contractor staff to identify trends and challenges. And we also looked at what other successful DOTs across the nation were implementing in their partnering programs. All the information gathered was used to design the program. We defined areas within the current program that could be refined and updated. We decided to rebrand the program, and now it is not just partnering, we call it partnering with a purpose. We updated the partnering field guide and specifications. A partnering toolbox was developed for successful management and tracking of partnering efforts at the project level. And partnering awards are still strongly encouraged to celebrate success. However, we are working to update the award application. I would like to point out that mandatory professionally facilitated partnering is not changing. It will be determined during the project development and the appropriate specifications will be included in the contract documents. However, we developed a partnering matrix to help the project teams determine an appropriate level of partnering for their projects when professionally facilitated partnering is not mandatory. The intent of the partnering revitalization is to provide all our project teams with the resources and tools to have the best projects possible where relationships between the owner and contractor are developed and the team enjoys working together and looks forward to future projects together. An indication of successful partnering is captured in the department's performance measures. To give you an example, we closed out 51 projects in the fiscal year 2020 and 98% of those projects were completed within budget, with 100% of the projects being completed within time. In addition, there haven't been any claims on construction projects in at least eight years, and only one project had an issue escalated to the director's office. It is truly impressive that the project teams are working together so well, and with our revitalized program, it will continue to be successful and rewarding. I'd like to thank all of you for your hard work you do every day to make NDOT's construction program successful and beneficial to the public. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. We really appreciate that message. One of the things that Sharon talked about that I really love is that I want everyone to realize that we're already in a really good place when it comes to partnering at NDOT. And this whole revitalization effort is to take us from good to great. 
actually is the title of one of my favorite business books, but I love that phrase, from good to great. So we're in a really good place right now, and we're excited to improve and get even better. So I want to share with you just really quickly a model that we've used to create this process that you're going to recognize because we're using the same model as we build out the internal partnering program. So I call it the North Star model because it's a model that works for everything. And so I'm just going to draw a star just like I learned in kindergarten. And the first step is that we create a vision. So when we met together, we had a team of representatives from NDOT and also contractors and the AGC. We met together and we talked about what is our vision for future partnering? What, what would it look like if we could revitalize it, if we could improve it? What would that look like? And part of the product of that was coming up with a new logo is that we wanted something that was recognizable, that focused on trust and collaboration. So then the second thing was that we collected data. Now, many of you on the call today probably participated in some of our surveys. We did online surveys to NDOT employees and contractors. We did a lot of one-on-one -on -one phone interviews. We collected data to figure out you know, what's working, what's not working, what ideas do you have? And so a lot of the things that we're implementing came from the ideas that we received from the data. Then the next step is that we take the vision and the data and we move forward and we design a program that will help us to attain that vision. After the program is designed, then it's the fun part. Just like in the projects that you're building, it gets really fun when we get into construction. So construction is the phase that we're in right now. It's the implementation. It's where we're gonna take all of these things that were created and we're gonna put them to use. So from literally from this day forward, partnering at NDOT will be different because we have a new set of tools that we're gonna use and we're revitalizing these efforts. And then the last point on the star is we can't forget to celebrate. Now, many of you that have heard me uh, speak in your meetings before know that I, I talk about this model when I talk about how when I used to be an engineer designing campgrounds, we would walk on the ground, we would create the vision, we'd collect the survey data, we'd do the design, we'd construct it, and then all the engineers and contractors are ready to go to the next project, and I say, no, wait, we need to celebrate. And so we're hoping that through partnering, we have more opportunities for celebration within our teams and then also um, as an organization as a whole. And personally, I hope that soon we'll be able to meet together face to face and be able to have some of these celebrations. So now I'm excited to introduce you to Brian Dowd from Granite Construction, who is the other co-chair of the steering committee. So I first learned about the partnering process over 25 years ago uh, when our CEO at the time uh, was helping implement it at Caltrans. We had partnered on several projects out in Arizona, uh, both with ADOT and the Army Corps of Engineers. And uh, he saw the benefits of partnering and, and thought, you know what, well, we need to bring this to Caltrans. So he was helping implement it there. And then he was basically evangelizing around the company uh, to, to let everybody know how important this process was. It was a, it was a fit with Grant's culture and how we approach our work. And uh, so, you know, I thought, boy, this sounds great. And then since then, over the last 25 years, there's been numerous projects uh, that I've been involved in where we've implemented a formal partnering process from simple jo jobs uh, up to very complex ones. Uh, one in particular that comes to mind is a job that we did where we were contracted with the Army Corps of Engineers uh, to build the dam. Uh, the Bureau of Reclamation ultimately became owners of that dam. We had uh, state agencies, local municipalities, uh, water districts, uh, environmental groups, you know, a whole uh, group, vast group of uh, stakeholders that were all had, you know, skin in the game. And so for that project, we actually had a two day workshop uh, to kick off the partnering process. We all got together. We talked about the issues and the challenges we were gonna face. We identified as many of them as we could. And we talked about how we were gonna work through resolution on those, as well as how we were gonna treat each other as we worked through those issues and challenges. Uh, without uh, doing that, I, I don't think we would have had near the success we did on that project. 
so, you know, I became an evangelist as well for partnering. So when the word went out uh, from AGC that NDOT wanted to revitalize partnering here in Nevada, uh, and they were looking for contractors to participate in uh, coming up with it, what that revitalized program looked like, uh, I was raising my hand and saying, absolutely, I'm, I'm on board. So that was over a year ago now. Uh, we brought together a pretty, pretty large group of uh, both NDOT representatives and representatives from the contracting community. Uh, we've had multiple meetings, first in person and then over Zoom, uh, working through, uh, you know, what should it look like now? L looking at what's worked in the past, uh, what are some of the materials we've used in the past? Uh, we've gone through and completely revamped uh, all the materials, the uh, field guidebook, uh, the online tools, and, uh, and, you know, so now we're ready to roll this out. I'm, I'm really excited about what we've come up with. I think it's going to help a lot as we uh, start partnering on these projects, looking towards the future. Um, and I think the, the tools and the guidebook that we've developed are, are absolutely going to help folks out. So thank you for taking the time today. And, uh, and I know we're going to do some training in the coming months. So I look forward to spending time with you all and, and the success that we're all going to have looking towards the future as we implement this new revitalized uh, partnering process here at NDOT. Okay, thank you, Brian. So from those videos, you can tell with Sharon and Brian in charge, we are in good hands with this steering committee. This is another interactive part. Um, I want everybody to just think for a minute about one of your favorite tools. So in the chat room, we'd love for you to just type in there one of your favorite tools. This can be anything. It can be just a, something you would use around your house. It could be something electronic. It could be something that you use it in your job, but a favorite tool and why. So just give me a, a, a quick comment. Okay, so we've got a, a heat wrench, not gonna lie, probably haven't used a lot of heat wrenches in my life because um, it cuts everything. Okay, that's awesome. Any other great suggestions? We had some, we had some good ones this morning at our meeting. Um, we had a, a Dremel tool and a, a new electric hedger that replaced a, um, the old manual one. Okay, I love this, the spatula, because I love to cook and bake. I am right there with you. I am also a baker. The Leatherman tool, this is one of my favorites. There's always that debate between the Leatherman or the Swiss Army tool, right? So the Swiss Army knife. Um, a mixer because it binds things. WD-40 or duct tape, those are like the solution to everything. Okay, so I love these duct tape because it keeps my car together. That's, that's an awesome one. You guys are right on track. I want to talk about tools because tools are one of the things that we think are critical for a good partnering program. Sydney mentioned earlier that part of it is a tool set. And that's where we want to direct your attention now. The steering team, along with several other members of both the, the construction, the contractor community, and the INDOT staff, have worked together to come up with tools that will help you to be more successful in your partnering. So I'm excited now to introduce a video. This is myself just introducing a new tool that we're going to give you that does a lot of these things. It binds things together. It's a one-stop one shop where it's kind of the, the Leatherman of partnering, if you will. So let's go ahead and take a look at this video and enjoy the new tools. I am excited to be here today to share with you a couple of the tools and guidelines that the steering committee has come up with to help you be successful at creating a partnering culture on your project. As the steering committee discussed the benefits that come with partnering, they wanted to make sure that every single project, not just the large projects, got all of the value that comes from partnering with your team. And they recognized that sometimes that's easier to do on the big projects because you have a professional facilitator that helps you to do those things. So to kind of even the playing field and make it so that every project, regardless of size, has the same information and the same structure to be able to go through the partnering principles, we have created what we are calling the Partnering Roadmap Tool. The reason we came up with that name is because the new partnering motto, this revitalized partnering program, is partnering with a purpose the road to trust, collaboration, and better solutions. 
So we think that if you use this tool, you will be able to be better organized, be better able to follow the steps that lead you through this partnering process and create a culture for your team. This tool is a one-stop repository. It's a place where you can gather all of your information about the project. You can gather basic information, you can gather action items and possible risks, you can track escalations, you can track when you're having your meetings. There's even a place where you can track the kinds of information you might want to use for an award application. As you're going through the process, as you find ways that your team is working together or saving money, you can record that so that at the end of the project, you will have it all in one place and you'll be able to use that to quickly and easily fill out an award application. Now, you may be asking yourself, who is it that's going to use this tool? So you'll see in just a moment, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what the tool looks like. You'll see that after you've created your project, there is a checklist where you can go through all of the details you need to have in order to do a kickoff session. Maybe the RE and the PM are going to get together and use this tool at that point to be able to plan their first kickoff session. After that, what we hope is that your team designates what we're calling a partnering champion. This is another tool that the steering committee has talked about that we want every team to implement. We'd like you to designate one member of your team as the partnering champion, someone who will really pay attention to these partnering elements. Make sure that partnering goes throughout the process, that it's not just one meeting at the beginning and never talked about again, but something that really makes this a culture that is ingrained in what your team does. Now this partnering champion, it could be any member of your team. It may be a member of the office staff. Perhaps it will be the public involvement representative, or maybe it will be a member of the NDOT crew who has had a positive partnering experience in the past and wants to make sure that this project is just as good. So what I wanna to do today is I wanna give you just a very brief overview of what this tool looks like. After that, we hope that you will go out and look at it on your own. The website that you'll be going to is nevadadotroadmap.com. So when you go there, you'll have the opportunity to create a project. After that, you'll be able to come back to just your project. That's the only one that you'll be able to see. You'll be able to keep coming back to your project and add to it as you need and be able to track it as you go along. Now, I'm going to show you just a brief overview today, but after you get into it, if you need more instruction, there will be a detailed instructional video on the NDOT website under the partnering resources. So if you need to, you can go there and it will explain all of the fields and how to use it. Although much of it, I'll just tell you, is very self-explanatory and you'll be able to figure it out. So with that said, I'm going to share my screen. Let's go take a look at what this tool looks like. We're going to start right here. This is the home screen for a project that's already been created. Now, this is just a demo project. There isn't a, a real project here, but we wanted to show you some of the features of this tool. Every time you log in for your project, you will come to this home page. You'll see we have the partnering logo. We have your team's consensus team goals, so you can be reminded every time as well as the project number and the location. So let's just take a look. Over on the left, you will see this list that shows you all of the pages that are available on this tool. We're not going to look at all of them today, but we want you to know that there are places to collect all of this information. For today, let's start with the master checklist. This is a place where your team can go and follow along what you need. The first section you'll see helps you plan the kickoff workshop. You'll be able to determine your partnering level. Did you hire a facilitator? Did you schedule your room? If you did, you can give details of where that is. If you scroll down a little further, you'll see the heading kickoff workshop. These are all of the partnering elements that we expect you to cover in every project, regardless of the size. Again, sometimes the facilitator makes sure that you do these things. But now every single project has a list where you can make sure in that meeting that you discuss expectations. 
that you create consensus team goals, a charter, talk about potential risks, those kinds of things. Make sure you create an issue resolution ladder. And then if you keep scrolling down, you'll see another checklist for when you have your required closeout workshop. So this is just a great place to trigger your thoughts. What is it you need to do? For today, let's take a look at one more page. Let's go to the consensus team goals. This is where your team has an opportunity to expand on NDOT's regular goals as well as set your own. So when you come in here, every project will have goals for safety, quality, schedule, budget. You can add whatever sub goals you want. So on our project here, we've added one for zero reportable incidents. Now let's say we want to add a new goal just for our project down here at the bottom. This is where you could type in, let's say, create a strong team. This is one that we've used for other projects. It shows up there. You'll click save. It'll appear with your other goals. And then you'll see you have the opportunity now to put in some sub goals. So perhaps you want to type in an option of what you're going to do to create a strong team. And you can see where I clicked there that this field is expandable. So you can put as much as you want there. Next time you go back to the home page, you will see that create a strong team added. Again, I'm not going to cover everything here, but let's go down to the very last screen. So back over to the left, we'll go down to the bottom, and there is an option for award criteria. This is one of my favorite pages on this document. Oftentimes, projects want to plan in advance to, to go for an award. So we gathered some of the most popular criteria for different awards. You'll see those listed at the top. Throughout your project, you can come back to this page over and over again. Gather what you did, what dates you met, what team building projects you had. You'll see public or stakeholder information, partnering values, all of these things, a place to collect innovations or refinements. So you can take notes here. Again, you'll see the fields are expandable like they were on the other page. And throughout your project, you can just take notes, take notes. And at the end, when you're asked to go back and fill out an application after you've been working on a project for a year or two, you don't even have to think that hard. It's all right here. So to wrap this up, let's jump back to the project page. Uh, we didn't talk about this one already. This is where you would initially create your project and you'll see that you put in the key information. But on the bottom right, you'll see a button that says print project. I find this kind of exciting. This is a chance where you could print everything that you've entered here. Then you can use this, save it as a PDF, actually print it out on paper, either one. And you can save this to have as documentation. So we'll end now by just jumping back to that home screen. We've given you a very brief overview of what this tool looks like. There's obviously lots more and plenty of things that you can go in and look at yourself. But we hope that this home page is a place to give your project identity and a reminder of your goals and a reminder of how we're partnering with a purpose. So I'm excited about this tool. Remember you have the opportunity to use the roadmap tool. You have the opportunity to designate a partnering champion. And we believe that these will allow you, like any good construction project, to have tools for success. We believe that this will allow you to utilize the partnering elements, to utilize the partnering values, and to truly develop greater trust, collaboration, and better solutions. So we invite you today to go out and take a look at the roadmap, use it, and get all of the great benefits that come from partnering, no matter the size or the scope of your project. So go out and enjoy and good luck. Thank you, Cheryl. I am so excited about this partnering roadmap tool for so many reasons. Uh, we've been involved in partnering projects all over the world, literally, and to have all of those things and all of those resources in one place is gonna be invaluable. The other thing that makes me excited is that nobody else in the country has this. This is an NDOT tool that we're so excited that is really going to help us to raise the bar. So in the chat, a couple of interesting things came in, but one of my favorite was somebody said one of their favorite tools is an eraser. 
I love that. And I love the idea that even as we're building teams and partnering, sometimes we have to take a step back and say, ah, I need a do-over. That didn't go just the way I was hoping it would. So there's lots of tools that we can use as we improve collaboration and improve our partner relationships. We have two shorter videos we're going to share with you right now. One of them is from Mario Gomez, and he's a district engineer at NDOT, and that will be followed by Seth Alexander, who's the area manager for Ames Construction. NDOT's commitment to partnering is to put together high-performing teams that deliver safe and efficient transportation projects that provide value to our communities, the traveling public, and the freight industry, just to name a few. It is important that our goals are the same as with those of our stakeholders for us to deliver projects within time, within the limited budget, and within the limited resources. With partnering, our expectations are in that through mutual respect, we manage risk by forecasting, identifying, and resolving issues in advance so that we are able to meet our goals. My uh, personal partnering journey has been an interesting one. As a young engineer, I thought it was just for the big bosses. When a partnering session came around, my only question was, will there be lunch? Um, I came to Nevada about five years ago. I was still really on the fence about partnering. Um, Ames had completed some projects here in the past where we did not have the best partnering attitude or relationships on projects. And I had to work really hard to repair those. What I learned is a lot of the concepts in partnering, they actually work and they really are for everyone on the job. So there's a lot of good information in this roadmap. Um, let's follow it together. Nevada DOT has invested resources in this program and engaged the contracting community. Uh, contractors have stepped up, offered their assistance and their opinions. They're tools and processes in place for projects of, of all sizes, not just large projects. I am so excited about the steering team that we have. As you can see, Mario and Seth, they're great members. They have great enthusiasm for what we're accomplishing with partnering, and they bring years and years of experience to help us to fine tune this program and make it the best that it can be. I've also loved the opportunity that I've had over the last year to work with so many people at NDOT. And now I want to introduce you to Tanya Andre, and she is the Construction Administrative Manager at NDOT, running different programs, and one of them is partnering. So she's going to share some tips with us. Hi, everyone. This is Tanya Andre, Construction Administration Manager for the NDOT Construction Division. Partnering is one of the programs I manage, and I'm excited to share information on the updated training and awards. It's been a really great experience working with the team during our partnering workshops to identify what is working well, what could be improved, and seeing new energy directed toward the partnering program. Now, as part of the steering committee, I see the momentum building and know the updates to the program will have a positive impact on how we do business every day. While we're rolling out some tools today that you can start using right away, we also have plans for rolling out additional help and information in the coming months. We will be providing partnering training to all NDOT construction staff, along with staff from our contractor partners. This training will introduce those that have not been involved in the process to the mission and vision of NDOT's partnering program and give our more seasoned staff a refresher on the current best practices. The training will provide tools to ensure partnering practices are being utilized so we can continue to resolve as many issues in the field and avoid escalation when possible. The training will also give everyone an opportunity to ask questions and collaborate to work toward better solutions. This will be a one-day training currently planned for January or February of 2021. We will also be offering leadership training for those in a leadership role. This training will be provided and will offer additional tools for negotiating and ways to make sure that a partnering culture is being promoted in your staff. It is the goal of the department to have all construction staff, both NDOT and contractor, attend the training. Some of you may be wondering about NDOT's Excellence in Partnering Award. We haven't forgotten about it. 
or the projects that deserve recognition. It is important to celebrate their success. The call for projects was delayed to better align with the rollout of our updated program. The award application and evaluation process needed an update too. We will be sending out the new application for both 2019 and 2020 construction seasons in February 2021, and I can't wait to hear about the challenges your team overcame to deliver successful projects and recognize your project team's efforts. Please feel free to reach out to me with any questions. You'll see my contact information below. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. We're excited that she's able to be a part of this process and that she'll be leading the charge with the awards and with training, especially on the training front. This is something that Sydney and I have had an opportunity to do in other states and participate in their training where we bring contractors and the you know, Department of Transportation employees together in one room. And the collaboration that takes place there and the things we can learn from each other is really exciting. So look forward to that. And we especially hope that that's the kind of training that we can do in person, maybe at the beginning of the year. So watch for news of that coming. As our last member of the steering committee that we haven't heard from yet today, I would like to introduce Craig Madol, who is the CEO of the Nevada chapter of the AGC. Hi, I'm Craig Madol. I'm the CEO of the Nevada Chapter AGC. AGC and our member firms were committed to the partnering program with NDOT and met for over a year to establish this new program. One of the things that we knew that this program needed to have it, its predecessors did not, was a way to survive into the future. Therefore, we've committed to creating a steering committee for this program. The steering committee will ensure that any alterations or modifications are able to be made. Both NDOT and industry members will serve on this steering committee, and two permanent members, one each from the industry and NDOT, will oversee this steering committee. General contractors and subcontractors statewide will rotate in on a three-year appointment basis to assist in this steering committee. If you have concerns or comments or suggestions for improvement on the partnering program, the steering committee can be found at the website and also in the guide. I'd encourage you to help us improve this program and with any recommendations or suggestions for improvement. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing the success of this program in the future and in the field. Hey, everybody. I don't know about you, but this 45 minutes has flown by for me. I hope that you uh, have enjoyed this. We're nearing the end here. And so as we promised, we're going to do some drawings for prizes now. Uh, those of you that have seen us in person, we love to hand out our chocolate chip cookies. Obviously, that was impossible today. But what we have is three $10 gift cards to Starbucks, so you can buy yourself a treat and a drink on us. So let me do these drawings. Our first name is Todd Barclay. So we have your email from the registration, and we will just email you out a gift card. So good job, Todd. The second is Grant Weller. And the third one is Kyleen Kidder. So those are our three winners. We will be emailing you out um, a gift card so you can enjoy a treat. So we have one more video, and this is one that Brian Dowd created for us at the beginning when we were just kicking off partnering. So we're going to watch that one now. One of the cornerstones to partnering is collaboration, which is when, you know, two or more people or entities come together to uh, solve a problem, uh, resolve an issue, uh, or maybe come up with a better idea on how to do something. Uh, a job like this, a $50 million job, there's, you know, tons of opportunities to collaborate and, and come up with better ideas. But uh, even on some of the smaller jobs, the contractor, you know, like Granite working with NDOT, uh, there's there's always an opportunity to come up with a, a better way of doing things, which requires that collaboration and, and that strong relationship where we both have a common goal in mind and we're working together to reach that goal. And that's really what partnering is all about. So we just want to wrap up today with just a couple of closing comments. First of all, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of our participants. We had over 75 people joining with us this afternoon. So thank you for being here and taking the time to learn more about the revitalizing partnering effort at NDOT. 
I also want to thank the members of the steering committee for all the time that they've spent helping us to get to this point and all the support that they give to this program. And I'm so excited about where we're going from here. And a special thank you to Director Swallow for being here and sharing this time with us and kicking off our session today. Just want to close you reminding you about the three elements that we have to have in order to have successful partnering. We have to start with the mindset that we get to choose that we want to be good partners. We want to create win-win scenarios and we want to create trust and collaboration. The second thing is the tool set. Again, the tools that we shared with you today, we're so excited to be able to implement these because these will make a difference in the way that we do our business. And then the third thing is the individual skill set. I'm just going to challenge you to think, how can I personally develop my skills? You don't have to wait until January when we have the training. Just challenge yourself. Look up a YouTube video. How can I be a better communicator? How could I be a better listener? How could I improve my emotional intelligence? All of those kind of things will help you to be a better partner. And as individually we improve, our teams improve, and our projects improve. So thank you everybody for sharing this time with us. Again, we really appreciate it. Go, go out, be good partners, and have a great day. Thank you.